what does all this mean? Now, I don't normally have Dr. Pachinik on, but maybe once a month, really smart guy, but things are so hot and heavy. I had him on uh, last week. So I thought we'd have him pop back in because we ran out of time to talk about de-evolution. Now, people think of that as like going back to horse and buggies. No, it means taking the power back from the central government, back to locales, back to the people. We've seen this with Brexit. We see this with uh, the situation uh, with the Catalonians there in Spain. We see this all over the world where these artificial structures that were set up by colonialism are falling apart. But here it means Washington and other areas run by socialists falling apart, people running to areas uh, that the global stone control and prosperity then taking place. The problem is then like locust, unconsciously, the parasites and their controllers moved to the next area where we fled to. So I wanted to speak to this, but since he was on with us last week, so much uh, has already come out. So much has happened with more leaks, more information, Hillary being followed around by ambulances, Hillary uh, being, being photographed uh, coming out of black SUVs with the whole back lowers down with a wheelchair. I mean, clearly she's degenerating fast where she can't even give a speech once a week. Uh, we're going to talk about all this and more, the attempt to hand the Internet over to this multinational consortium. Big things are afoot. Big agreements are afoot. Major shifts are happening. Um, the good news is, and I'm not, again, lionizing them, but people are always saying, well, where's the military? Where are the police in all this? Well, when you have open corruption, Hillary and the emails, and all the rest of it, nobody gets in trouble. It sends a message. And you have George Soros trying to start the destabilization campaign against local governments to then bring the UN in. And, and now they're announcing the Justice Department to run the elections. This is really waking people up. And you see this symbol of the rotting facade of the establishment, of these multinational interests that have taken control of our country. The arrogance to have Hillary foisted, this corpse shoved in front of us, I think, as I've said many times this month, is emblematic of a, a, of a so-called elite that is out of touch to the point of Chinese officials arrogantly screaming, you're nothing, this is our country, our airport. Uh, I mean, this is, this is disintegration. Obama, four to five months a year on vacation, uh, refusing to go to Louisiana. Uh, just the total disconnect. Is this the Marie Antoinette moment? Is the power structure crashing and burning? And where do we go at the end of this, Dr. Pachetti? Alex, it's always a pleasure, but I think the key word that you used was Marie Antoinette. And let me give you and the audience a very clear idea of what we're talking about. In a liberal newspaper, the New York Times, which often criticizes us, but sometimes offers very interesting information, they wrote about the fact that she is making over $156,000 per hour. Let me repeat it again, $156,000 per hour for the rich and the very rich and the very famous. She's sequestered away in Martha's Vineyards, in the Hamptons and Beverly Hills, will not talk to anybody and make sure that if you take a picture with her and you're a child that costs 2000 if you bring your family along with you and you want a group picture with Hillary, that's 10000 But literally, she makes 156000 per hour taking pictures with her, not doing anything, not creating anything, not implementing a program or even being able to articulate a policy. So what we have here is literally the beginning of the end of the Marie Antoinette School of Government. She is finished. She understands that and in fact has a woman who intercedes for her by the name and it's the most ludicrous thing I've ever seen but it's, 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 it epitomizes the, the, the absurdity of how Hillary is so alien from us. The lady who intervenes on behalf of Hillary Clinton is Lady Lynn Forrester the Rothschild, a friend who makes sure that nobody uh, asks Hillary any hard questions, does not get in a confrontation, and makes sure that everybody pays $100,000 per couple of, at a lamb dinner in the Martha's Vineyard uh, estate. Now, Lady Lynn Forster, the Rothschild, in essence, is a woman who was born in Bergen, New Jersey. It has no... Uh, no credentials whatsoever. She's a wannabe. She's married to a Rothschild. 
She's not even, yeah, she's not even a Rothschild, but the Rothschilds aren't even Rothschilds. So the point of fact is what Alex is saying is the system is breaking down because a Rothschild is totally irrelevant to this country. A Rothschild was nothing more than a family of Shylocks who loaned out money in the 14th century in Frankfurt, Germany, and became some nobility. They didn't create anything. They didn't inf invest or inv uh, create any new medicines or any great works of art. So what you have here is the ultimate corruption of the uh, elite, including the Soros, including the Bon Jovis, including the Hollywood elite. And what's happening is even the liberal paper like the New York Times has to show you that the, the contrast between what the people are talking about, the Hillary Clintons and all the liberals and how they live wearing $10,000 uh, outfits and receiving 156,000 per hour is so out of control that the devolution of power is coming imminently. I said the Secret Service can't stop it, the FBI can't stop it. Well, what they do is reinforce a Marie Antoinette, a Louis XVI, and a Venera. And on top of that, one of the things that came in, Alex, and what we were talking about. That when Hillary gets in, if she gets in because she's always so incapacitated physically and mentally, Dr. Drew agreed with that and many other internists agree with that, we have Mr. Tim Kaine. Now, I purposely left out one element of Tim Kaine when I said that he was, in fact, a CIA Jesuit operative with Negro Ponte. The New York Times came back on an article, didn't address me, but it was addressed to me and Alex, saying he was not a CIA operative, which was absurd. But instead, they explained how he was part of liberation theology. Now, to show you... That's code word for Ford Foundation. Well, it's even worse than that. The liberation theology, and they didn't realize that, neither did Tim Kaine, is about communism. It's about sure. the Jesuits who practice equal subsidies for all the peasants and everyone else were considered anti-American, pro-communist, pro-socialist. And in fact, Pope Francis, who had had two of his Jesuits killed, four nuns assassinated, supported this gentleman, Tim Kaine. So what we have is not only the church falling apart, the Rothschilds falling apart, the Hillary Clintons falling apart, the entire establishment, the Secret Service not really able to do what they're supposed to, the FBI totally uh, emasculated, and we have, therefore, the devolution of power. And you have Hillary. Have you seen the photos of the press when she did this one press conference that wasn't a press conference, the first in over 170 days, with about a dozen women and two men looking at her like she is Jesus uh, coming down from heaven at Mount Olives. I mean, when you look at the way and, and the videos of how they fawn after her, it is such a sick joke. I mean, what is going on here? Well, what's going on is the fact, you know, Alex, we've seen this before with the Bush administration and Bill Clinton and the Obama administration. What happens is the minute they became president, they immediately isolate themselves off. And I've got to go back again to the Secret Service. The Secret Service has not served America. They have served a president of the United States and creates by their definition of their jobs, this isolated notion of a precious individual who can't be assassinated. Now, I'm not advocating assassination. I'm just simply stating the fact that no person. No, I get it. I mean, they're totally like like Chinese princesses with their feet bound in a you know an ivory tower in La La Land, disconnected. But at the same uh, time, they're, they're working on our dollar. It's our tax dollars that pay. So they're not servants. They become emperors. So let me ask you this question. Yes, sir. Looking at this, how far can it go? Because my historical gut, just and, and, and by that I mean my gut, my common sense, but also history shows, when you get a type of rotten elite like this that are delusional, uh, other countries that are corrupt and out of control and have their own problems still wouldn't put up with stuff like this. There's an incredible disdain, uh, disrespect, and then we look at how other countries are treating n not so much our military or our people, but treating Obama, making him get off the back of the plane, getting in their face this uh, yesterday, 
uh, not having a red carpet. What does that signify by the Chinese? Well, it's a little bit worse than that, my friend. If if anybody recalls, the president of the Philippines, Duterte, just called Obama the son of a whore. He said he said his mother so, is a whore, which is actually true. Well, irrespective of the well, it just shows how informed he is. His mother was in pornography with the communist publisher. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. But go ahead. No, no, no. But what the point is. I cannot imagine that that pres the president of the Philippines would ever mention that or say anything to Putin, to president of China. So what has happened is we've created this isolated, weak individual, which will continue with Hillary, who cannot stand up for anything, cannot assert the position of America, and really does not represent the United States. I agree. So Let's go back, though. I mean, Philippines, a big ally of the U.S. They know that China's being allowed to walk around in there. Our military doesn't like it. I mean, why would he make that provocation? Because he doesn't give a damn about uh, Obama. But there's a more serious problem, and I'll tell you what it is. When I was Deputy Assistant Secretary of East Asia under the Baker administration, I had to deal with the Filipinos. And I noticed that when I came into their uh, prime minister and their offices, they would sit there in, in, a, in a very arrogant way and kind of treat me in a very patronizing way, although I was technically over their country. And, but what I knew and they did not know is that I had their visa applications because every one of the leaders of the Philippines, including Marco Aquino, had American citizenship or American visas. So when this individual started to shoot his mouth off about our presence in the Philippines, I cut him off immediately and I said, you know what, your visa's up. And I will explain something to you very quickly. You keep, you shut your mouth. You say what we're going to tell you. You're going to nod your head when I tell you what we're going to do. We will give you half a billion dollars. That was my instructions. And we're leaving your base in the Subic Bay. And we're going to Singapore. Do you understand that? And if you don't, I'm going to withdraw your visa. That was it. And handling him that way, he shut his mouth. He kept quiet. Sure. So it's there just classic male bravada. And Trump uh, understands that. You look at somebody like Obama who bows and kisses everybody's ass. Doesn't he get that's the exact wrong message? No, because once again, Alex, one of the things we haven't talked about is when you're a weak individual, what do you pick as your coterie of advisors? There's all sycophants. Hillary has one of the worst group of advisors I've ever seen. The continuity of the Sandy Burgers, the Susan Rices, they come out of think tanks. They're totally inept in what they do. So the little office Denver weasels that just sit around. Than a speech writer. So they just sit around all day at lunch telling each other how smart they are. Well, it's not only that. It's a problem for us because we have to be able, the American public has to be able to vet out all of these people, including for Trump. I have to tell you exactly what I said last time about Manafort. Christie has to leave the Trump campaign. I've no, no, you before. said months before Manafort's b b b problem is going to be Russian. You were right. Now you're saying get rid of Chris Christie. I don't need because to be a rocket I scientist to know that. I mean, Chris Christie obviously is going to deal 360. He's going he's gonna to work with, I mean, I mean you're, you're literally infiltrating yourself, bringing that giant chipmunk into well, your operation. What I'm saying also is that I'm warning the Trump and the, and the Hillary campaign on your show that they should not be uh, 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 getting advice from neocons like Steve Hadley and Zalmi Halazad because the people on this show and the millions of Americans who fought against the Bush and Clinton administration are watching again, seeing Steve Hadley, Wolfowitz, Zalmi Halazad, all the neocons who created 9-11 and created the war in Iraq being questioned and being offered positions in the uh, government. If that occurs, I will say it categorically. The Secret Service, the FBI, and many other institutions will have very serious problems. Very serious problems if the Bush people come back in any shape or form, either under Hillary or under Trump. Sure, so under the soft coup being orchestrated by patriots in the country, just their information war, the Bush and the Clintons are out. We're going to have fair policy for the U.S. We're not breaking the United States for globalism is some sacrificial lamb to impress the Chinese or anybody else. So let's talk about how we make sure that happens. Well, one of the ways it happens is we at the local level, for example, in Florida, we support a man called Ted Yoho, a veterinarian, came out of the what's called the Tea Party here. But it's now, this is a microcosm example. Explain how we accelerate 
the, the, the patriot liberty takeover of the states? The way we do that is to make sure we, we, we pinpoint our local candidates who support, one, our national security at, at the national level and at the local level. Secondly, we want to make sure that these individuals are not beholden to big business in any way. Thirdly, we want to make sure that they have values that are consistent with this country as a Judeo-Christian entity. And fourthly, and uh, fifthly, they're people who will respond to you when you write to them or tweet to them. I give you an example of Ted Yoho, who's a vet, local veterinarian, decided to run for Congress, had never been in politics, came and met with us, a whole group of liberals. Uh, right and you're saying so you can organize them, you can inform them, and you can use them to organize even more by getting involved in promising campaigns. Twitter at StevePachinik.com. We should point out that Dr. Pachinik is working around the clock to try to save this country. If you are running for local office and, 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 and you're on the Tea Party Patriot uh, you know, system trying to restore the republic and make this yes. country free again and great again, Dr. Pachinik uh, is just now launching this, even though he's retired, because uh, this is the final big battle for the republic, folks. You can yes. find him at Twitter at StevePachinik.com or Twitter at StevePachinik or StevePachinik.com. Go ahead. Thank you, Al. Please continue talking about what de-evolution is because you predicted well, it here like five years ago and it's happening. Well, it's happening very quickly because our tax dollars can no longer afford the, 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 the price of Obama going from the uh, golf courses of Martha's Vineyard and right into China, where he really doesn't need to go to an ASEAN meeting. I've been in an ASEAN meeting, they're a waste of time, and it cost us $186,000 per hour for one of his planes, and you double that because he's got two to three planes going. Number two, you get involved at the state and local levels and commissioners. I mean, literally, and you go for the candidate. If the candidate doesn't have a party or it's a libertarian party or even a democratic party, you make sure that candidate responds to you and you work for that candidate at the local level and organize your friends and neighbors to make sure that we have people who can respond. That's right. You, don't, to you just don't vote. You infiltrate the political process. Correct. This is a whole new revolution, Alex, and you're absolutely right. You've articulated in a way we've never had it before because of Twitter. Because of the Internet, we're able to now sustain a dialogue with our local representatives, back them up, work with them for free if it's voluntary. If you have a few dollars, you give it to them. The national level now is not as relevant. And the reason for that is that we're devolving power to the state level. The governor's becoming more powerful. The county commissioner's becoming even more powerful. Your judges, your tax collectors. Because they're learning the feds don't have any power because they're not even federal anymore. They're globalist. And so just start disregarding. If we all start not, not responding, it'll be, a, it'll be a bloodless revolution game over. You got it. Alex just hit it on the head. What relevance does the FBI really have to the local community? None. Zippo. Zero. They can't even indict someone on the federal level other than somebody on pornography. They're not on drugs, nothing on the Secret Service, nothing Department of Justice, nothing Department of Education. In other words, we just ignore them, whether it's financially with the IRS and we start playing uh, and, and lower our tax bases with them and, and dedicate yourself to that because they need our money. We'll talk more we about that, but let me throw money. this out before we go to break. We'll come back to one more segment. What about the fact that I've talked to the average FBI agent, and they're just dealing with bank robberies and kidnappings and are good people and more awake than the general public. When we say these agencies are bad, though, the individual men and women on average, I would say, are they've got bad leaders and bad management. What do we, what happens to them? I mean, uh, what are they well, supposed to do? let me tell you what happens. One of the, I think you hit on something that's very important. When 9-11 occurred, a couple of the CIA operatives and others came up to me to literally apologize and excuse themselves. And the one question I had is, was your pension that important that you could allow people to be killed, an American people to be killed? And, and they looked at me with shame. And the problem is, Alex, and this is what we have to reconstitute the federal government. No more pensions for 20 years. No one. Neither the military. Let's the talk CIA, about that. We talked FBI. about that Friday, but, but I mean, here's my deal. Not, again, I'm not lying. I was in the FBI. I've been a big critic. It was the FBI that mainly exposed 9 11, actually, when it happened. You know, they were the ones not that. Not really. A lot of them were involved. In well, no, I know they were, but I'm talking about also people's talking about the flight schools and stuff. Well, I know you were there day one exposing it. You were with uh, other groups, but we're going to talk about that when we come back with Dr. Steve Pachenik. This is important information. We're on.
Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Steve Pacini our guest. We're going back to him here in just one moment. Uh, again, conservative icon Phyllis Schlafly died yesterday at 92, and she'd even written a column about Trump being like Reagan. Her last column she'd written the day she died. And we're going to air this week the interview we did with her about a month ago. Ted Cruz and folks tried to take over her operation but with, his, with her daughter, but she handed it over to her son. Uh, Twitter users mocked Phyllis Schlafly's uh, dying, celebrated her death. That's on Infowars.com. Uh, but her last uh, article was, Trump in Mexico recalls Reagan in Geneva. And just how it was real political detente and bringing people together. And a win-win around nationalism, not globalism. I want to talk to Dr. Pachinik about the failure of globalism. It was designed to fail. They promise all this kumbaya, oh, that'd be great, but that's not what it was. They use it to cheat people. They use it to position themselves. And they have no sense because if you screw everyone over, then there's not a nice place to even be rich. You know, then you're ruling things from some th third world hell. You've got a castle on the hill. But that shows you the different mindsets of these control freaks, those of which would dominate and control us versus those of which wish to live in freedom. Before I go any further, uh, we fund our operation self-funding. A lot of the media is going to this model now. Uh, we've done it because we can get the sponsors to fund the operation, but it takes too much time and too much energy that we could be focusing on information war. And instead, we can simply go out and get great products that we use, that we like, try to have the lowest prices out there. A lot of times we do, always competitive, and then let folks know that it's a win-win. You buy these products you need that are high quality, it funds our operation. We have the widest selection out there of non-GMO, open-pollinated heirloom seeds. A great gift, uh, great to plant a garden, whatever. It funds the operation, a win-win. I'm all about self-replicating. I'm all about uh, 360 wins. I'm all about what helps you, what helps us. We're running a special that we rarely run. 30 to 40% off all InfoWars storable food from the line InfoWars Select at InfoWarsStore.com. Very same food as my Patriot Supply, we sell it right next to it at the store. Drop ship from the very same factory in Utah. Huge discount right now. With all the inflation and all the garbage going on, with all the manipulation, it's good to have storable food. It's good to have firearms. It's good to have water filtration. 20% off water filtration systems. 20% off Alexa Pure air filters. 20% off the true good halogen. Nascent iodine X2. And so much more. And then we also have things like the Hillary for Prison shirt that we're selling at cost. $9.95 shipping is included for a limited time at InfoWarsStore.com. And just that meme alone is one of the top searched items on the Internet. Uh, we look at Hillary uh, and the photos of her wheelchair truck that she gets out of. I mean, this is all coming out. We just point out what people should look for. Then the independent press goes out and does it. And then the globalists are in deep trouble. So I want to move quick on the 10 minutes we have left with Dr. Steve Pachenik. Twitter at Steve Pachenik. Or you just go to stevepachenik.com, find his books and more. Doc, asking you, you know, just to overall give us some quick answers on some subjects here. I know you have a lot of sources. Uh, I don't know if you have talked to them on this uh, subject. Or is it just your own research? When you were on with us, I don't know, three, four weeks ago, and you said she needs to have an independent group of medical examiners, neurologists look at her. That word for word has been said by Obama's former doctor last week. It's been said by Dr. Drew two weeks ago, and he was fired less than a week later. Uh, it's been said by now scores of doctors are coming out after they fired Dr. Drew and saying, look, this is dangerous. We should be allowed to go on the radio and, and say that, you know, armor thyroid and Cumidin and rat poison don't mix well. Uh, who the hell are her doctors? The same thing you said weeks before. So, so I think bigger than Hillary's illness is this attack on the freedom of the press, the attack on the free speech of medical professionals, and the fact that mainstream media would so gleefully go along with this oppression really concerns me. I mean, yes, there's an awakening. Yes, globalism's in trouble. But just like uh, Julian Assange of WikiLeaks said last week, the, the media climate of, uh, of hopping up and down with glee when the press is censored or medical professionals are censored uh, really should concern everyone about where this country's going. 
I think you're absolutely right, Alex. One of the things why you, and again, I know you don't like my praising what we're doing and what you're doing is one of the things that happened, and you have to remember, not only are they attacking you, but when she says Alex Jones has this conspiracy theory that I'm dying, she's clearly attacking me and others. Yeah, no, exactly. No, when she says that, Alex Jones, they mean, they mean the pantheon of guests. Well, what they mean is the pantheon, but in, in particular, they were hitting something I said because it's very hard for someone like myself, forget who I am, Steve Pachenik is, but when you're a board examiner, board certified psychiatrist, having bought, you are a medical doctor from Cornell, Harvard, and MIT, it is very hard for the New York Times and CNN to come and attack you and In fact, that's why no one attacked you. They've been attacking us for this story well, no, every no, no, other they've guest. They've attacked you, but here's the difference. No, I'm saying they wouldn't attack you, and, and, and that, that was key because it was powerful. Well, that's exactly it. But what's happening, Alex, is that we're working so well together that, in effect, I expected that Jeff Zucker, the head of CNN, not a very bright guy, not a smart guy, a guy who's just interested in money, and I expected him to shut down Dr. Drew, who's a board-certified internist, and he did it. So what we're really watching, Alex, and this is happening across the board, is we're seeing the rise of fascism of the left. And that's what you're beginning to see as we're pulling back and we're becoming more successful in exposing the neocons and exposing the Marie Antoinette and exposing the incompetence of the CIA, the incompetence of the Secret Service, of the FBI, the Department of Justice. What happens is the only recourse they have is for their mechanisms and their outlets to shut down shows that were very important and reaffirming a very objective concept. She is sick. There is no question about it. The problem I said, and that Dr. Drew said, and many other board examiners said, release the records from Columbia PNS. If you've been hospitalized for months on end, you have MRIs and CAT scans that indicate she has brain damage, she has physical and mental problems. And the drumbeat's gotten stronger. And I agree, I agree uncannily. What you said on air seemed to be a roadmap for all these other doctors to have courage. Uh, clearly, they were attacking you when they attacked me. So, so what does that signify? And, and now looking at her, again, I'm not a doctor like you, but it looks, I mean, she looks like she's deteriorating quickly. Well, the point of fact is that the American public now, the, the veterans, from Iraq and Afghanistan have to stand up as a group and say we cannot accept her as a candidate for the presidency of the United States. We cannot accept Zalmay Khalasad or a Steve Hadley or another neocon to represent us or anybody in the Bush Clinton uh, entourage to come forth to be our leaders. And that's where you we have been very successful and the American public has to now protest it in such a way that they can have a very Absolutely. peaceful revolution. They can have very peaceful protests. But, but here comes the next problem. Acceptable. They may try, exactly, Dr. Pachinik. So how do you see them striking back? A false flag, an attempted assassination? I see demonstrations. I see women who have incredible signs about Hillary and her incompetence and the, uh, and the despicable behavior of her husband. I see Trump coming back and hitting them again and again and again. I see Bernie Sanders coming out and saying again what he should have said all along, which he has said. This is a corrupt. I was about to say, what does it signify that he rolled over for months and is suddenly coming out against her? Well, you know, that's a good point, Alex. I have a lot of respect for Bernie. I don't know him. I heard him in New Hampshire. But, you know, he is a old line Jewish socialist from Brooklyn, but he represented a very important part of those young people who I expect them to demonstrate in the streets because he realized he made a concession which was very poorly uh, uh, executed. And in fact, he was co-opted by Hillary. Whatever concession he made to her, she defaulted on it. And I think Bernie should come back in and reassert the concepts that he said and reaffirm the fact that he has to have his millennials protest against a person like Hillary, a Marie Antoinette, come back into the I forefront. agree. If Sanders came a out and said... can never come back. Bernie is an important part of this. If Sanders came out and said Hillary stole...
the election, stole the nomination, it'd be it Correct. for Hillary. He said, he said the business was rigged. Trump said the business was rigged. Trump exactly understood what you and I did, that Bernie is the exact opposite and the mirror image of him, and they want the same things. One can build the condo, the other one has sure. to pay. Sure. Dr. Pachenik, I, I know you want to stay on the offensive, and that's always great and good, and you're talking to a general audience, but, but, but specifically, though, let's talk about how we expect the neocons, uh, the globalists, the George Soros is to strike back. I'm really worried about an assassination attempt on Hillary, whether it's successful or not, making her a victim. If, if I was them, I'd be looking at that. Obviously, we don't want any harm against her. I'd be looking at some type of economic deal or maybe a new little war. Uh, I mean, if you were working for the other team, what should well, you... Well, one of the things that I'm getting out of, that seems to be out of control is the Zika virus nonsense. I mean, you know, for a virus to come out of Brazil and then contaminate Miami Beach and, and affect, I understand it affects women who have children, but beyond that, no one's going to get Guillain-Barre syndrome. I mean, we have a lot of, you know, issues that are at hand. Zika virus is not one of them. The economy is the second, probably the most. That's important. my next question. What do you make of, of Saudi Arabia? Is that, is that our people have to request that our, our soldiers come back from Africa from Iraq and Syria. We never had a state of war declared. The president has has no right to send the National Guard of Florida into Djibouti and Africa. I don't need to lose young Christian men and women into a war that has no national security. I've got another question. we got to move quick. What do you yeah. make of the claim that uh, Obama is negotiating around the clock with Putin to join him against ISIS? Isn't that just a way to cover up the it's fact that Hillary that, and him... Uh, uh, Putin, uh, Putin, Obama's finished. Basically, what's happening is our forces there, whether they be mercenaries or whatever, work with the Russians. We've worked very closely with the Russians. ISIS is being degraded, but not because of Obama, but because they have a, I don't know. No, I know. He knows his, his little move was defeated, and so now he wants to act like, as a legacy, he jumped in to stop it. Yeah, but he has no legacy. There's absolutely no legacy for Obama. It's gone. It's just a black man who came in for eight years and disappeared. He's the invisible black man. That's all he was. And there's no legacy. ISIS uh, is gone. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, clearly, ISIS was a proxy army of some of the Gulf states, elements of NATO and others. proxy army of the CIA. What we need in next administration is defunding of the CIA and a Michael Flynn to take over to make sure that we don't have civilians who go out of control for the past four years. Well, sure, isn't the answer, because all the contacts the CIA has, just take it over? Well, the CIA is... It took, what happened is, I'll be very frank, John Brennan, who was a disaster as the DDO in Saudi Arabia, came out, and instead of taking human, that is, collecting intelligence and understanding the cultural and psychological dimensions, decided to uh, co-op what we call SOCOM, Special Operations Out of Command, and use them for drone warfare. In other words, we don't have any more intelligence. Which makes everybody hate you. Them. See, what they don't get about HUMET is, it's not just you can have electronic intelligence. They think HUMET is just gathering intelligence. HUMET is winning hearts and minds. You remove well, that and run around bombing people. But that's the way you turn people against the country. That's exactly it. I mean, the essence of any war, the essence of any success, is understanding the enemy or the people and their culture. We have not done very well. And that's been a serious problem. We have but it seems like sabotage. They've got to know doing that would sabotage the U.S. I smell something bigger here. And I know you always say it's ineptitude, and I agree there's a lot of that. But at a certain point, they're undermining the U.S. They're destroying our institutions. They're destroying our power. It, 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 it's clear this is sabotage. Well, let me put it this way. I know you think it's sabotage. I call it so gross incompetence that 16 different units can't even integrate themselves and we're spending tons of millions and trillions of dollars trying to figure out what's going on yet we have no unified so it's team. mainly looting Even with james clapper that's not enough sure. what we need is to clear out this entire system to have a sweeper and that's the kind of guy that mike flynn would come in he knows exactly what the problem is yeah what'd you make of trump saying i don't want to meet with the cia they'll just lie to me and then harry Reid goes oh yeah well we lie to the american people We'll just give him fake briefings, and Trump goes, exactly, dumbass. I've got well, the Army advising me. Harry I don't need... Reed worked in a house of prostitution before he became a Mormon. Well, he's obviously a monster. That.
Let me ask you this question, though. I mean, clearly, look how the things Trump says and the things he does are so smart. He's like, I don't want briefings from the CIA. I don't want a bunch of bull. He knows what the problem is, but he's got to clear out Christie. He's got to clear out Ben Carson. He's got to clear out all the neocons. And he has to understand that the government that we that we have is, has to be cleaned out. I mean, one of the most important things in the first 100 days is to literally shut down institutions and fire right and left. That's sure. what I do. Why, why is the establishment so scared of Trump? I mean, for me, that's the biggest endorsement because for him. Because that's exactly what they can do, because they don't have a hold. One of the key elements, Alex, and I think your audience has to understand this, one of the key elements in intelligence or politics is the ability to manipulate and create vulnerability. You want vulnerability in your enemy and your allies so you can manipulate them. The Clintons have a whole list of issues on everybody involved with them. They know exactly how to expose them. With a guy like Obama who had a homosexual history in Chicago, they know all about him. They know all about his mother. They know all about the fact the CIA came out of Occidental and came up. Hillary Clinton, a history of lesbian activities, a history of, you know, corruption. These are the things that we know, but the system clearly wants to deny it. So what they have is manipulation and, and a co-optation of manipulation. That's all it is. It's part of pandering. It's part of ascendancy to power. And that's what you have to have a people who have no relationship to them, who are not beholden to them. And that's why I came in and out of administrations. I never stayed in one administration. I never accepted a pension. I never accepted a promotion in the military. So there was nothing they could do for me. If they wanted me, it's because what I could bring to them. But the reality is I didn't need them. They needed me more. And now the issue is what can we do in America to make sure we're no longer vulnerable to this kind of nonsense? And Absolutely, because these people are out of control and you can smell their end is coming. The problem is... Well, well they... but Alex, part of what you're doing and a great part of what you're doing is... is, is is the spearhead of cutting through again, and we need to keep going because the election will be rigged. There's no question about it. It is totally rigged, contrary to what Hold the Hold on, I, I got to skip this break. This is too important, even though it won't even be a network of these people take over, so it doesn't matter. Uh, we're all in now. Clearly, they're bringing in multinationals. Uh, they went from saying there's no such thing as election fraud to now we're going to save it with Homeland Security running it. That's what Roger Stone said a month before they did that. He said, Alex, watch. They're going to, quote, keep it from being a fraud. They're going to protect the election. That's who does it. And now they're going to have Justice Department computer teams hooked in, lovingly monitoring everyone. Giant foxes guarding the hen house from the imaginary Russians who can't even hardly keep their electricity on right now with the GDP of Italy. Uh, and, and so now you're, you're, you're stating, yes, you think it's going to be rigged. With them now responding, they've got to protect it. How do we counter that? How do we get Donald Trump in? Well, you, what you say is we don't want you anywhere near there, and we have what you call for an independent uh, uh, elector of volunteers. We don't need the Justice Department. There is no justice. It's not a department. We don't need Homeland Security. Cause I agree, security. but how naked is it to have Obama d d saying there's no such thing as fraud, but now he's got to come take control of it to keep you know, it safe? Stupid is as stupid does. Obama's irrelevant now. He's just an, an ignorant individual who came to power thanks to the CIA, but he's irrelevant. Now the American. So is he just one more guy with his little government badge that just and thinks that's like he's God? Well, it's not relevant anymore. If we ignore him, all he has to do is write his books. But the truth of the matter is you hit on the key point, which is to get the volunteers, all of us, out there to the electoral booths to make sure we can see people voting and make sure that we take information as they came out as to who voted. All right, let me do I this. Let's say, let's say Donald Trump hears five minutes of the show today. Dr. Steve Pachinik, I'm going to let you go, and I appreciate your time. I'm going to hand the baton to Paul Watson with a big... Fourth hour coming up. I mean, his engines are on. They're red hot. All pistons yeah. are, you know, firing. Steve Bachanik, you're talking to Donald Trump, or you're talking to his crew, you're talking to his advisors right now. What would you say to Donald Trump? I would say get rid of Christie, get rid of Ben Carson, clear out your whole transition team. Let me see who's on it in terms of foreign policy. Avoid any neocons, Steve Hadley, Salme Khalazad, anyone else. Now, when you go into the debate, you can call the shots. You can determine whether you want to walk off stage, whether you want to make it five minutes, ten minutes. Do not let the reporters determine your outcome on your debates. The debate now is yours. You can do whatever you want with it. If it conflicts with the NFL, 
then refuse to come on board because it's not going to change anything. The second thing I would do is to hit Hillary on every issue that she is vulnerable. The 156000 an hour, the fact that she hasn't accomplished anything, not anything as a senator, not one bill. She accomplished nothing. Libya failed as, state, turned ISIS loose to kill hundreds of thousands in Syria. Not only that. You know what she did? Even in the Clinton Foundation, they contributed to the death of 10,000 Haitian, innocent Haitian people who I love and I've worked with because they brought in Nepalese UN peacekeepers. And the UN was guilty of this crime. Did you see the FBI? Did you see the International Criminal Court come after them? No. But Chelsea even said that this was a case of gross negligence of her mother and father, yet not one mention was made. 10,000 Haitians were killed because the Clintons went down there and couldn't organize an effective cleanup, and instead the Nepalese used the water system to defecate in there. And, and the gen Secretary General of the UN, who's South Korean, is not held accountable. The UN is not held accountable. And so now... Let's be clear. The UN comes, sets up a water treatment, and then craps in it. You got it. That was, the, I didn't want to use that, but you used it. That's correct. So they've killed people. The other thing that was brought out, and Trump has to bring it out, it was Hillary who told Bill Clinton not to intercede in the genocide of Rwanda. That's right. Why do you think Bill Clinton is in Africa? He's not in Africa because he cares about the Africans or he gives a damn about him. He cares because he was convicted indirectly by me and others of having killed because of gross negligence, a million Hutu and Tutsis who were, they were, he was warned about it. Sandy Berger was warned months beforehand that the Chinese had machetes. The French themselves had machine guns when they shot down the Tutsis. The French did this, and the French didn't take any responsibility, nor did the Belgians. But this was Hillary Clinton telling Bill, don't get involved. And instead, what did he do? He bombed Serbia. For what reasons? Absolutely none. So he had a, a most incompetent general, Wes Clark, of the Air Force send a bunch of bombers in there. But when he had to act, or she had to act, people died. They died again and again and again. We can no longer afford that. And America will stand up in a revolution, a quiet revolution, but it will be a revolution. I agree, and, 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 and just keep hammering the fact that he just represents this huge populist movement to bring nationalism and the renaissance he back. He is the revolution. It's I would also point that. out that the first moderator they've got is uh, admittedly part of her foundation. And, 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 of course, others they're announcing are also uh, have been caught working for the Clintons. So if I was Trump, I'd just say this moderator right here, so I just want to say right now at the start, uh, is a fraud and works for Hillary. It's that, correct. That, it's that type of devastator move that goes right after their arrogance. Up front, though, first thing. First off. I just want to say, Matt Lauer, you work for Hillary on an international foundation, so you should recuse yourself. I'm just pointing that out. When you pull stuff today, you give me equal time, and, and everybody just watch him. Anderson Cooper. I mean, is that a joke? Is that not a joke? I mean, I know he was trained by the CIA, spent a couple of years in the summers in the CIA. He, he talks about the most absurd things in Sandy Hook and 9-11, and then come and, and attacks us. This is Anderson Cooper? Come on, give me a break. I mean, he's kind of a cute little boy. He's not even a, a, a man who can really ask serious questions. Their narcissism has to be controlled and manipulated by Trump. He gets it. None of this should be acceptable to him, but it's the American people. How does he do that? Let's say with Cooper as a moderator. I mean, what do you just point out? Oh, it's the little uh, blue blood. Uh, what is it? Aster or is it? Uh, uh, it's a, uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's Aster or is it? Uh, I forget what's royal. No, it's the, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. It's, it's not the Aster. I always flip it. It's the uh, Vanderbilt. Van 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 oh, Vanderbilt. the little Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt was nothing more than the Dutch. Demon, you know, they make sure, up their own. Sure, so I mean, how would you just in, in psychological warfare go after the moderator? What would you say, like, oh, you work for Hillary's foundation? How how impartial? Just want to point that out up front. Or, or like, uh, what would you say to Cooper? Oh, Mr. Cooper, do you tell your audience you were in the CIA or, you know, or that you're a big donor to the Clintons? That's correct. I mean, you know, it's the kind of information and psyops you can de deny, distort, or deflect. It's up to him to decide what he wants to do or have his But, but put him on the, the hot seat like saying, listen, don't tell me guns are causing the mass murder. It's these psychotropics that are your main sponsors, um, Pierce. That's correct. 
I mean, there there isn't one there that is an open. I mean, what they did was to pick one of diversity, and it was their own people. So, you know, I would I'm just saying, regardless of who it is, that. these people are jokes, and they're wide open. Uh, Dr. Pachenik, uh, Twitter at stevepachenik.com, P-I-E-C-Z-E-N-I-K. <laughs> stevepachenik, did I say it right? Steve, P-I-E-C-Z-E-N-I-K. Uh, Doc, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. It's a pleasure, and thank you. Thank you. I tell you, it's epic time to be alive right now. Amazing things are happening. Paul Joseph Watson, hosting from London, England, is straight ahead in 70 seconds. Don't forget, we've got up to 40% off of storable food right now at InfoWars Store.